Today, we're beginning a brand new series called The History of Microsoft. Travel with us back in time as we discover the roots of one of the world's most important technology companies, year by year. Using rare videos and photos, see how it all started in Albuquerque, New Mexico with only six employees. Since then, Microsoft has seen hundreds of products shipped, billions of lines of code written, innovations, breakthroughs, and research that has changed all of our lives. Come with us now as we start our historical journey back to where it all begins, 1975. Welcome to the history of Microsoft. The year was 1975. Everyone was singing along with Glenn Campbell to Rhinestone Cowboy. A movie starring a fish by a little-known director named Steven Spielberg terrifies and entertains audiences everywhere, and Sony introduced the home video cassette recorder. But that was just the beginning for what was about to happen in the world of communications and technology. On January 1st, 1975, the Mitz Altair 8800 appeared on the cover of Popular Electronics, inspiring two young men, Paul Allen and Bill Gates, to develop basic language software for it. Shortly after, on February 1st, 1975, Bill Gates and Paul Allen complete Altair Basic and sell it to their very first customer, MITS of Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is the very first computer language program for a personal computer. A major milestone uh, for us was when we were walking through Harvard Square one time and saw this popular electronics magazine. And it was kind of, in a way, you know, good news, bad news. Here was someone making a computer around this chip in exactly the way that uh, Paul had talked to me and you know, we thought about what kind of software could be done for it. And it was happening without us. Um, and for all we knew, maybe they had some software people. They were just going to go charge off and do this thing. And so we, we wrote these, this company immediately and uh, offered to do a basic for them. And they thought that was interesting. They called back and said, well, you're serious. You know, we have a lot of strange people calling us. Because this article um, received immense uh, interest. I mean, the idea of a kit computer, even though there was really nothing you could do with it. I mean, there's, there's no teletype hookup in the early days. There's no software for it. All you could do is use these switches, actually <laughs> use them here, and key things in into this front panel and you know, maybe do a little program that does things in the lights. Or actually a guy named Steve Dompier discovered that because this bus is unterminated, if you're very clever about the program you run, you can get uh, high frequency emission that can cause a radio to make interesting noises. Now eventually we did get controllers for teletypes and uh, cassette tapes and uh, uh, floppy disks, that kind of thing. But in the early days, it's pretty useless. People just bought it thinking that it would be neat to build a computer. Because we'd never had the chip, just the book from Intel, if we'd made any mistake in terms of how the instructions worked, it never, the thing never would have run. And so Paul was scheduled to fly out to Albuquerque. He decided to go get some sleep. I stayed up all night reading the book to see if we'd miscoded some of the instructions and finally decided it was all okay, punch out the paper tape, and made sure Paul got that before he went off on his plane. He wrote the bootstrap loader, that is the thing you have to key in to make this computer smart enough to know to go get data off the uh, teletype to read it into memory. He wrote that on the plane on the way out. Uh, it was actually 46 bytes, the first one. I eventually wrote one in, in 17 bytes, but anyway. Um, and he took the basic to uh, MITS. They had a machine they, they had run with a 6K of memory, which for them was a big, big thing, um, and loaded it up in the paper tape. The first time, for some reason, it didn't work. The second time, they loaded in, and it worked. And, of course, the simulator, it's very slow because you go through lots of instructions, do a single instruction. So actually, the real machine, even though it's such a simple little microprocessor, was faster than our PDP-10 simulator, about five times faster. And so to Paul, when it finally came up and it said, OK, uh, actually that first version said ready. Most basics, when they're, they're ready, they say ready. Later when I was squeezing bytes out, I thought, well, it's faster to print 
um, okay, and it's kind of a nice, friendly word, so I, I shortened it to okay a, a little later. Anyway, so it came up, said ready, and he typed in a program. You know, print 2 plus 2, it worked. He had to print out squares and sums and, and things like that. And he and Ed Roberts, the head of this company, sat there, and they were amazed by, you know, that this thing worked. I mean, Paul was amazed that that our part had worked, and, and Ed was amazed that his hardware worked, and that here it was doing something even useful. Another month passed, and Paul Allen is on the move. On March 1st, the young man from the Northwest joined MITS as director of software. And on April 7th, 1975, the headline of the first edition of MITS Computer Notes reads, Altair Basic Up and Running. Wasting no time on July 1st, Bill Gates and Paul Allen officially shipped BASIC version 2.0 in both 4K and 8K editions. Yeah, this BASIC was the first um, real piece of software ever written for a, a PC. And it, it became, for the first generation of PCs, the thing that unlocked the power that was there because although some people did machine language programming, 90% of what got done was done in, in uh, BASIC, and 90% and of that was Microsoft BASIC, the descendants of this tape that got onto all those early machines. Just a few weeks later, Paul Allen and Bill Gates signed a licensing agreement with MITS regarding the BASIC interpreter. It was the year 1975. The average cost of bread was 69 cents, gas was 53 cents a gallon, and the partnership yet to be officially named Microsoft declared yearly sales totaling $16,005. But childhood friends Paul Allen and Bill Gates had just begun the adventure of a lifetime, and soon they'd be taking the rest of the world with them.